Good morning to everyone who's watching. More than welcome. Today I'm going to address with you the following question. Is the passage that is written in the first epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 7, a forgery? Before I answer that question, I just want to speak with you about the meaning of forgery. What does the word forgery mean? If we go to the to the Cambridge um, Dictionary, then we will see there a definition. And I'm going to read it with you. It says, an illegal copy of a document, painting, etc., or the crime of making such copies. Then, it says here, a copy of a document, signature, painting, that has been made illegally, in order to deceive someone. So it's a falsification of a document or a signature or, or, or anything else with the intention to deceive someone. If we go to the Oxford Dictionary, we will see the following. It says, forgery is the crime of copying money, documents, etc. in order to cheat people. Again, forgery is the crime of copying money, documents, etc. in order to cheat people. So, forgery means that you have to in the intention to cheat people by falsifying money, document, etc. So today I'm going to look at that passage and see if this passage was inserted in the, in the Bible to, to cheat and to deceive the readers of the Bible. Let us go to the passage to see what it says. 1 John 5 verse 7 says the following. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Again, it says this. It says there are three that bear record. Witness, bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. So we're going to examine of or this passage is a forgery. That means that it was intentionally inserted in the Bible to deceive and cheat the people. So if we can prove that this principle that the Father and the Word, that is Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost, that these three are one from other passages in the whole Bible, then we will uh, simply conclude that this verse is not a forgery. Why? Because it does not deceive the people. It is nothing new. It is established in the whole Bible. Let us remember, the word forgery means to the, the, the copying, the crime of copying money, documents, etc., in order to cheat the people. That is what the um, um, meaning of the English word forgery. It is crime, it is a crime, intentional crime, copying money, documents, in order to cheat the people. First, we find in John 10 that the Holy Jesus is saying, I and the Father am one. So we see first that God, God, the Father, He is God. He is our God. He is our Father. That is established in many places. In many places. We are the sons of God. God is our Father. In, in um, Revelation, He says, I will be uh, uh, their Father and they will be my sons. So, this is established in the whole Bible. Then, from all passage, from many passages, we see that Jesus Christ is God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh, Paul uh, says um, God was manifest in the flesh. So, many passages we see we see this principle in the Bible. Then, is the Holy Ghost is the Holy Ghost also God? Is the Holy Ghost also God? Well, if we go, if you go with me to Acts, and then 
uh, chapter 5, we will see this beautiful passage that affirms this uh, doctrine. Let me see. It says here, um, Acts 5, verse 3. It says, But Peter said to Ananias, Why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto man, but unto God. First he says, you have lied to the Holy Ghost. And then he says, you have lied to God. So we see that the Holy Spirit is God. John 15, it says, verse 26, But the Comforter, but when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, shall testify of me. So we see here that the Holy Spirit proceedeth from the Father. It means he's one with the Father, he's also God. And then we see, for example, in Job, Job 33, Job chapter 33, and then verse 4, it says, The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty has given me life. Here, this passage also, a simple conclusion, the Holy Spirit is also God. We see, uh, by the way, in many uh, instances, in the book of Acts, that the Holy Spirit speaks. The Holy Spirit is a person. You can grieve him. You can quench him. So we see very, very clear that the Holy Spirit is also a person and that he's also God from the passages that I have shown unto you. So we, we can see that the Father is God, the Word, the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God. But what does it mean by that these three are one? We have firmly established that the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God. But what does John mean when he says these three are one? Well, he means this simple thing, that both, all three of them, they are uncreated. God is uncreated. We, human beings, are created. We are created beings, angels are created, the nature is created, but God is uncreated. And you, you, you see that, for example, in, 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 the, in the verse, in the um, Genesis chapter 1, you see, the, you, you read there, the Spirit of the Lord was hovering over the waters. So the Spirit of God was there, the Father was there, and of course, John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Colossians 1. Everything was made by him and for him, for Jesus Christ. So these three are one. That is, as I, as I showed you from many passages in the whole Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, that this is a firmly established doctrine. I hope now with all my heart that you have seen in all this simplicity that this verse is not a forgery for it, it does not deceive us. In contrary, it, is, it establishes what we have. That the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Ghost is God, and that these three are one. John 10, the Holy Jesus says, I and the Father am one. I and the Father are one. They, that means they are one in nature. They are one in nature. Are they the same person? No, because we see that the Father speaks with Jesus Christ. We see that Jesus said, I will send you the Spirit. So we see that there are three persons, but these three are one. That means they share in the same nature that they are uncreated. I hope with all my heart that... Um, you have now seen that this verse, 1 John 5, verse 7, is not a forgery, for it is not intentionally inserted in the Bible to deceive the people. It does not deceive us. It establishes what is laid out in the whole, in, the, in all scriptures, in the all 60, 60 books, 60, 60 books of the Old and the New Testament, 
this principle that the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, that these three are one. Have a good day. Bye-bye.